middle of the second century, there is evidence of a Christian theological academy in Alexandria. This was headed by a teacher called Pentanus. They enjoyed a strong reputation. They were noted for their Christian intellectuals. A famous um, example of one of these was a Gnostic Christian philosopher called Basilides. His followers claimed that he had received his gospel from Glaucius. He was supposed to have been the interpreter for the Apostle Peter. Now the followers of Basilides are essentially um, termed dualists and emanationists. The Gnostics viewed matter and spirit, this is the dualistic element in Gnosticism, as opposing forces. They have no relationship to each other at all. Spirit is good, matter, anything to do with matter is corrupt and bad. Um, there was this Gnostic myth of aeons emanating in succession from the unbegotten father. And there are five principal eons. And they have nose, I hope I pronounce this right, which is mind, the logos, which is the word, the phronesis, intelligence or prudence, sophia, which is wisdom, and dynamis, power. So from Sophia and Dynamis, there are 365 heavens in descending order, and they are called Abrasaks. The God of the Hebrews ruled the lowest heaven and created an illusory world, which is us. The true God, this is another God now, saw humanity suffering in this illusory realm and sent Nose. Christ to bring them the knowledge, gnosis, that, that would free them. He was also the Word. This is where uh, John 1 and the Word was sent from God becomes very, very entangled with this gnosis idea. Um, he was born as Jesus, yes, and um, he had a secret name among the Basilideans, which was Kav Lakav, or Kalke, Kaleko. I hope that's pronounced right. Uh, Christ is um, a totally divine being and as such does not have a physical body. So, Basilides' big claim to fame is his interpretation of the crucifixion. Christ is incorporeal, could not die. So, on the way to the crucifixion, the Romans grab hold of Simon of Cyrene and they force him to carry the cross. And um, what happens is Jesus somehow performs some magical crossover that Simon becomes him and he becomes Simon. And poor old Simon is the one who gets crucified and, and not Jesus. Apparently this is the idea that's taken up in the Quran. Also, um, Basilides believed that we would come back. In other, in other words, he believed in reincarnation. And one of his most famous sayings is, we must love the universe, we must desire nothing, but also to hate them, which is essentially typically Gnostic. In about 150 AD, um, Clement of Alexandria was born. His parents were pagans, but by 180 AD he had replaced Catanus as head of the catechetical school and he headed that up for the next 20 years. Now his whole goal in life was to try to harmonize the um, Greek philosophical ideas with the the Jewish scriptures and Christianity and um, he had this deep belief that all roads led to Rome there was one universal higher truth and uh, what we have to do is find a common thread in all of these so he believed that um, Plato 
had actually laid the groundwork for Christianity long before Christianity was there. A very powerful idea, which really was the prevailing philosophical idea during the Renaissance. At his particular time, he was trying to reconcile the ideas of Christianity to, a, to philosophical ideas that would appeal to the Greeks, who regarded the gospel as a little bit too simplistic. One of the great things that Clement has done was the um, philosophical works and writings of many of the philosophers of his day are preserved because he used them in all of his writings. He was probably the greatest Christian heavyweight philosopher of his day um, before the time of Augustine. And um, he was famous for developing a analysis of the Bible and the systematic theology that we still use. Um, his father had been murdered. He had been put to death during a persecution started by Septimus Severus, the Severan dynasty again. And um, his father was martyred and Oregon actually had to take care of his family. And he managed to find the patroness of a wealthy woman who included her in her philosophical salon. This is an idea of people meet, gathering together and exchanging ideas. It became very popular in France in the uh, 18th century again, but this is where it started, where uh, philosophers gathered together to exchange ideas. It was a very, very popular idea, and he headed up this particular Simone. He also started going to lectures um, given by very famous philosophers, as all intellectuals would have done in those days. There was a Neoplatonist called Ammonius Saccus, and um, he was the teacher of a guy called Plotinus, and uh, these ideas formed the basis of the Neoplatonic Christian philosophical, philosophical idea that uh, became embedded in the um, teachings of Christianity from this time back.